Hello everyone, today we will continue with the electronic chambers and wiring. For that first I will prepare the boards and the PCU with the bracket. So first we can start with the Raspberry Pi. So we will screw these two pieces together. So my screws are around exactly 10 mm. I will just cut these excess. Since these parts will not be seen, I just used my remaining ABS which is open for a while that's why they are blue raspberry pi is ready next one is the raspberry pi power supply since i will use the spider board i will use the 5 volt from the spider board so i won't be putting the 5 volt power supply for raspberry pi so the other one is main power supply, which is this one. We need M4 by 6. Terminals are on my right hand side. And uh, there's a empty space in here and there's not. So this empty space, this movable part will be looking uh, towards to you while the terminals are on your right hand side. So I'm just copying the orientation on the manual to put on this. So you need to first put the, let me show you this way, first put the one way, so it will have degree, then snip on this one, yeah, like this, and for removing, so with that I am trying to copy the orientation of this mounting part, because sometimes the other uh, materials can be in a way so it can cause an issue so that's why i'm copying the same orientation you need to also put these while the terminals in the right hand side these will be mounted in here with again m4 by 6 so this part that yeah, there's a notch for the frame you can tell this part will be here I will not tighten this one to find the home position with the frame. So this will to this for to hold the power supply because for example in my V2 it was only holding the DIN rail and when I flip my printer it was moving on the DIN rail like up and down. So it was yeah this is a nice touch. Okay our power supply is also ready on the 3d print part or it's already written we will put these two the orientation will be like that so the other, if you do the other way around it's uh it's, it seems like it will be shifted so it will be in line these two don't over tighten these it's tapping the plastic 3d printed part Like I said, I seen a mod and I took the, the screw version of the power net. This is also done. And SSR. Okay. SSR also ready. Let's make also X, Y and stuff. You don't need to tighten these screws. Yeah, that's better. So the orientation will be like this. Be careful about the lever's position. So I have the mod 1 for the JST connectors, I will do that now. So this one like I said for the connectorizing it, basically there will be a JST connector in here and the extension wire from here to board. It's snug fit, I was thinking to glue it but it seems it doesn't necessary. Now I will do the wiring. I will use the normally closed contacts. I will strongly suggest the same to you. I explained in detail in the on my VT videos. You can check it out. So yeah, the the normally normally closed contacts are outer legs. So we will use just this pin and this pin, not the middle pin. Let's wire it. So, Let's try it. So right two legs should be triggered with the yeah, right one. 
Nice. Left two should be triggered with the. Yeah, that's what we want. So, like I said, this is the orientation of the levers. So, I'm using the outer legs. I connect these legs to JST connectors. That's all. This is also ready now. Let's move on. After preparing my electronics, now I put also these brackets. This is for uh, our cable chain. There should be 73 millimeter distance between this side and this side. And this is for the corners. And uh, it's basically for the cable chain. Uh, sorry, the cables to feed the motors. And if you see, I put my motors in the wrong direction. Normally it's designed to feed the cables via this channel to underneath. And same for the other side. But I thought we will feed these to the cable chain. I will change the direction of this motor. It's not that much hard. You just need to unscrew the whole all screws and carefully turn around the motor 180 degree in this case and put the tighten screws again but since the belts are installed you need to be careful otherwise yeah eh, the belts might be out of its route so that was my mistake and another thing these are again i'm using my leftover abs because like i said right now my first purpose is just get together all the pieces to print its pieces again so i will run this printer and print all the abs parts again and i will change the abs what part with the new ones because i didn't like the v zeros print quality due to my unflat bed issue but that's the thing so let's continue now we will put our din rails to put it we need to slide these pieces 3d print parts to mount it we need to place them in a way there should be an 8 millimeter empty space between it. Manual suggests that there should be an 8 millimeter gap between it, but I will put it 120. Actually, I will put it 1 millimeter. So that means 100 millimeter gap in here, minus 420, uh, 420 millimeter, so 3. 20 so that means from here to here it should be 160 so for that first we need to arrange these tightening one side by the way we need to put five in five spring nut in here and four in here and there should be one m5 nut which you are not using while putting this one so there should be one empty M5 knot between these two rails, don't forget it. So now I should have one millimeter, 100 millimeter gap, yes, approximately, yeah. I would recommend you print this support to uh, extra two, so you can put one in here and one in here and same here, so there will be more support, it's a small print. If you are printing it yourself, I would suggest you print these pieces extra two and use it now we'll use m3 by 8 and we will tap the plastic part these are just holding the these, these are just for holding the din rail do not over tighten these because you are treating the plastic part do not over tighten them by the way i also reoriented my z motors for these two because I will use a printed cable chain, so this will be just going directly to chain. It was here before. This will be back of the printer. Besides, yes. Ah, by the way, I prewired these two. If you are using this type of it, I will let me quickly explain. We have one fuse in here, it's basically a wire thin wire that just supporting up to certain amount of current so after that current it is just destroying itself so you're protecting your 
circuit or device whatever so that if you so if you if you are energizing your printer and you are not getting anything on the board or on the screen itself or something and you are sure your wiring is uh, fine just just select this one and check this fuse so you can basically do the continuity test this side and this side check with the continuity test it should be a short circuit between two legs and yeah, most probably this, this is tight if you are energizing your printer and it's not energizing and you are sure you're about your wiring etc you can check the fuse and for the this part so so this sideway is an earth connection and if you see it's directly this one and after that you have this one also and this pin if you see going to the fuse so it's going to fuse in here passing the fuse and you are going to switch with the cable I'm going to switch with the cable so since it is going to fuse this is the live wire and the other one is this one if you compare this side and this side the other one is this one this is also going to switch this is the neutral line it's AC it doesn't matter that much which one is using but just I would recommend to follow the this color code and the using fuse on the live wire and yeah and after that it's going to switch actually basically so you are plugging the your cable the live wire is going to passing through the fuse and it's going to your switch from switch these legs it's, it will go to the power supply and bed etc so the switch in my case switch is making short circuit these two these two and these two if i hold it like this these two it means up and down up and down and there is a usually you will see that there is a plastic separator between that i mean yeah but i mean it will not make a short circuit sideways but up and down so that means when when the switch is on this will be a nutter this will be a live wire okay let's move on now now we will put this with the m3 by 8 on v2 if you remember i i use the terminal but in here i will use because they are easier so I found this uh, bracket thin bracket for the Vago in Vago is this Vago or Vago I don't know this terminal uh, on Thingiverse and I will use this one as a distributor so this should be placed in here so you can just slide it just nicely fitting in the uh, thin rail it's not moving it's, normally it's holding two and I printed three of them because one of them will be live one of them will be neutral one of them will be earth connection on that side and this side I will leave it empty if I need it if I need to distribute for example 24 volt I can add this terminal directly in here and use it so that's why I'm leaving empty in here once the third is finished I will also put third one and put the labels on here and continue with the wiring these two at least first I will put the devices let's start with the power supply so power supply will come here so you remember the we left the MT M5 notice here it's for that it's for the this one with M5 by 10 I will secure this side and do not forget the tighten this one also so this is the back side of the printer the load side is looking to bed side so the bed cables will be coming from here to meet in here so this side for control side this will go to the control board which will be installed here in this rail so for the orientation it's nice i have wired the terminal part now i will check if everything is okay or not now my my multimeter at the AC part and right now the switch is off so there shouldn't be any uh, current any voltage and if I open it 
yeah if you see I am receiving 230 now that part is okay what I will suggest you test in each every step what I did I just prepared my power skirt with the I did the cabling and I just cabled the terminal part and I'm taking terminal terminal part that's all now now I will uh, put the cable for my power supply and I will test the, this power supply so do the measuring in every step in this way you can see if there is a problem what is the reason of the problem right now for example if I plug this one and don't get any voltage on the output of this device since I tested this part I can tell that there is a problem with that with the power supply so then after that I, 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 I can try to debug what is the what is the what is the problem in there but otherwise imagine that you did all the wiring and you are switching on nothing is on and in that part first you need to find where is the problem but if you test it in each every step you can see where is the problem if there is a problem and another thing uh, switching of the switch is not enough for your safety because these are the exposed pins and as long as you're you're feeding this power square with the cable if you just plug the, your outlet there is voltage in here and it can cause a dangerous situation so after you testing it just unplug your cable this is the safe spot because otherwise like I said as long as your cable is plugged there is a voltage in here okay that part will be not switched on if the switch off but these all part would have voltage current and that can cause a problem so don't forget to unplug your cable while you are doing the next step right now this is the earth terminal uh, since I color coded I know that earth terminal live terminal and the neutral terminal so it's all done and I also wrote the AB motors Normally there is a like a, these things in the STR files which you can like here you can zip tie it but I'm using these covers which is directly fitting on the this slot so I use that once and I wrap the cable underneath inside the channel and I just close with uh, these covers I think this is giving more clean look so I will also reprint these these are yeah these are okay these are from the printer yeah and after that I I just put extra um, zip ties to make it more organized and I also roughly wrap my Z motors all these cables in here belongs to stepper motors so except the extruder all of them in here right now I will continue with the power supply part I just put the terminals on one side so it's shown in here also this one is earth this one is neuter and light so we use these terminals to power our power supply expecting when I switch on, I should expect 24 volts in these terminals because I just plug power in. So I'm putting my multimeter to DC 200 because I want to measure 24. And when I switch on, yeah, the LED is came. Let's see the voltage. This one and this one. Yes, 24.1. Uh, you don't need to bother yourself with the point 0.1 volt, but yeah, I will just adjust it. There's a potentiometer in here with the screwdriver. If you turn it to what do you call counterclockwise, it will drop. Uh, if you clockwise, it will increase. So you can fine tune it. Yeah, exactly. That means our power supply is also okay. Switch off. I will not forget to unplug the printer and I will continue my work. Now I realize I used the wrong color. 
so the blue in my case blue is live and brown is neutral but it should be vice versa I am always mixing this but yeah I will use like that no problem but normally as a standard the blue is neutral and the brown is live wire okay let's put so this is live um, okay just and yeah, that was the AC part yes. right yeah so the I when I put my bed I the bed cable also came here one of the cable will be plugged in here the other one will be plugged the nutter and from the aluminium bed I will bring an earth connection so I can say that the AC part is nearly finished now I will go with the AC part low current part for moving further I will check the jumper on the spider board the motherboard so for the driver yeah these should be on the cap this is true I am using 24 volt fan again so that's why I'm changing the jumpers because the jumper was on the 12 volt so I need to correct that uh, by the way for the fans you on the spider board you can use 24 12 and 5 okay DC 5 volts for the action I think using the power from the USB or internal this one or internal regulator of course internal regulator will be fine this jumper for the our probe there's a two section 24 volt or 5 volt so we are using 24 so this should be on 24 this is for the 24 volt or 12 volt RGB you are doing the voltage selection for it most probably I will use this one 5 volt RGB if you see there is a the third and fourth one from the right it's labeled M3-1 M3-2 these are actually coming from the 31 stepper driver it's for using two stepper with the one stepper driver and since we will not use this function we need to connect these two serially for that you need to put two jumper on the M3-2 like this so like this in my case these were on the right selection for the stepper driver these are I just change it the others and these I added as I did for the others it was fine and for this I ordered the resistor because I seen that there is a issue with the 3.3 volt and it was saying that if the board is energized before and if I put right now the driver it will burn something I don't quite remember right now and for solution that it needs to be the capacitor needs to be uh, discharged with the resistor which was recommended is 100 uh, K so for that I'm waiting the resistor after that after discharging it I will put my stepper drivers be aware of that you also might want to discharge it for putting your stepper driver what I will do pull the wires for the tool head then after that I will continue with the remaining part of the wiring now first of all I reorganized this I changed I corrected the color code now as a standard blue is neutral brown is live earth is yeah, yellow I also changed this end live brown neutral blue etc and beside that I also changed this one beside this one I labeled my stepper motors cables because yeah otherwise while I'm plugging it it will be hard to find it because there will be a lot of wire and I also put the wire for the 24 volt for the spider board I connected it in here these four are going to 24 volt power supply uh, these are bed in and power in inputs so in the manual it was showing these two con needs to be connected to the power supply so what I did basically these cables are coming from the power supply 
I just stripped the cable a bit, didn't cut it, and fold it and put the these ending from the other end I just put again the ending and put the insert in the terminal. You can also cut it and put two wires, doesn't matter. The only thing it should be in the manual it's showing that these two needs to be connected to the power supply. This means these two needs to be parallel each other. And this is the bed out uh, these two are going to our SSR input. So the, the, it's a, there's a positive and negative input. Be careful about that. So the, in my case, yeah, in your case also, it should go to positive to positive and negative to negative. It's already written on the board. You can see from the next one. It's positive, the down one. This is positive, this is negative. And the positive wire is going to positive input of the SSR. And now I will test my board is it working and do i get 24 volt in here in both and after that i will continue the, the fighter is recommending to not put the tmc drive until the capacitor is discharged if the power is i'm sorry the board is powered and for any case i will do the discharge i may not be needing it but i don't know if it is about powered or not i don't remember i did i tried to power it up so for that we need 100k resistors and yeah if you if you have 50k for example you can put together in series and get 100 or if you have 200k uh, resistor you can put uh, put them parallel connect them parallel to make it 100k the resistor calculation is easy you can check it out by google okay now we need to put the resistor between these two positive and ground and these two positive and ground for that I'll use this point cable to make it easy point is the right hand side while the board the terminals are in your left hand side we need to connect this resistor between these two legs minus and ground so the other one is is nearby to a fuse there's a capacitor on the right hand side of the capacitor there is a again plus and ground connection in here also we will put one resistor resistors have not polarity so you can just connect them so now the tutorial is saying to wait five minutes now we will wait five minutes and remove the resistor now i will put the stepper drivers also don't forget to put the heat sinks there's a nine dots in here with the gold color your chip is somewhere in there so just carefully just carefully put your heat skin there we will use this stepper so there is only one way one way connection since there is a two pin in here so we will use that one we will use that one for other Z and this one for other Z so the second from the right one for the A motor we will also use the first one, the M1, we will use for B, so we will use this, and last one, the extruder is M4, so M4 this one, this one for the extruder, yeah, so uh, since there is a two connector for the M3, it's a little bit confusing but yeah we will use m1 m2 m4 m5 m6 and m7 by the way you can use also m3 for extruder for example but if you do it like that you need to configure the pin address default config will configured for this and also i learned that this cable uh, which came with the fitec board for the Word communication between the Raspberry Pi and spider board but for my current one it is reaching but it's not reaching when I use the cable channel so I crimped the pot connector on the cable made a new cable so I will use the Word connection instead of USB between the Raspberry Pi and Octopi I just used the pinout of the Raspberry Pi board and 
like I said, made this cable. So I will use power connection, like I said. So for that, we will use this pin. It's already written on the board. Pi, power, and wards. We are using 5 by 2 bond connection, and there is a four inputs empty. This empty part should look the opposite direction of you, while the terminals are uh, in your left side. On the pi side, empty line should look in the outside, and you should start with the, this pin, while the USB ports are in the opposite direction. You should start with the first one. Let's try it. Yep. Now the Raspberry Pi is also powered. Now I will connect the motor cables and be right back. I have plugged all the motors except the extruder. This is the B motor front left. This is the A motor front right. So these are from the step front line and they had the pond cable, the pond connector. They have they had these. I changed them with the JST connectors. Z motors had already JST connectors and color order is different but the coils are same so that shouldn't be an issue because in the stepper motors there are coils and you are energizing these coils and creating magnetic field with this magnetic field you are creating a rotational movement so when i compare with z motors the blue and red are on the left side according to me but it's in the first one in here is red and second one is in blue for, for the z motor but for the stepper online first one is blue and second one for red and it's same for the black and green but since these blue, red and green and black are paired and it has the right order with the Z one so they should be moving all same direction and if it's going in the reverse direction we can easily invert the direction via config so that should be okay now the wiring of the bed and the wiring of the extruder is remaining only I will double check with the manual by the way. I am using manual as a, like a checklist. For example, when I do that part, I am putting tick and with that I know what is left. So I will double check the current wiring and if I'm not wrong, only wiring of the bed and the wiring is extruder remaining. I will complete these and then we should be okay. I forgot to mention the wiring. Like I said, this is B. When you look up in the front, the uh, left motor on the gantry, this is A, and this one is the left motor, this one is the rear, and this one is the right. And the extruder is we'll put in here, and the uh, other one. Now, like I said, I will double check it and move on next. So, see in a bit. As you can see, I am using a hood board. I also Put the tool head board and yeah, the thing is the story is before I found the hood I was planning to do with the PCB breadboard and I prepared the wire and everything and after that I got hood and I decided to go with that and I found that there is a no extra pin that I can use for the for example thermistor, for example, the LEDs from the stealth burner, etc. I will need uh, new wires, extra wires, besides the hoods one, these four. So I decided to go with the uh, bot, so they are not interfering each other. So with that, now I will use, like I said, the breadboard and the hood also, but in the breadboard it will only break down for like I will use the tempster and uh, it will break for the what do you call the the, the LEDs etc. In the future, if I need extra pin, I, I I can easily plug the the spare cables and use the JST connector in here and I can use the free pins, free cables. For the cable again, I'm using the silicone wire. In V2, I had no issue, but the the new owner of the V2 contact with me and told me that the wire is uh, gave malfunction because it's silicone and because of that I decided to put the, my silicone wire on the cable sleeve first after that I put the 
all cable bundle and drag chain drag chain so as you can see there it's already inside of the K uh, sleeve so in here also same but in the back we are and just for now going down with pair cable as you can see it's a little bit mm, yeah and X axis it's fine but in the Y axis the chain is as you can see going up it's fine not a big deal now I will connectorize on the tool head parts like extruder and the hot end etc and after that I will connectorize the bottom side and plug them to the mother box I'll see you in a bit so this is the front part of the printer as you can see and here is my afterburner tool head at the moment it's the, only the probe is connected in here but in the for example in the future for the stat burner I will need a 5 volt and a signal pin so I will use the tool head board and see the hood board this is the hood board basically a small another motherboard so here I am feeding 24 volt and GND these two these are also going to do after burner uh, sorry these are also going to the tool head board so and these two twisted cable like I said is the cam bus cable so this is the uh, RTMC 2 and 209 I will put a heat sink on it don't forget it if you are using so this is the extruder so it's going to the extruder pancake motor and this is the our thermistor this is our cooling fan and hot hot end fan is connected here and this is the heater so all tool head related stuff are combined in here but yeah this uh, this has I wish this board has GST connectors like this one the extruder motor but these these are micro fit if I'm not wrong it's actually basically a smaller version of the this socket but it's a little worse to connectorize it I mean yeah it's very bad I understand since this has a small footprint they the, the, the creator of this mod is use these ones but yeah I wish I had the JST and the, a couple millimeter square bigger board that was okay but yeah this is the creator's choice no issue yeah this was the hot ends or that ends up in here right now I didn't tighten it yet because the position is not certain now let's give it power and see everything at least seems fine here it is so it's the whole board yeah yes no smoke seems fine do you remember in the frame build I said I don't have spacer and I couldn't print it? Turns out I could print it, but <laughs> I forgot it to, I did print it. And uh, later I was trying to figure out why, what is this piece is like, is a cover for the power supply or something, but yeah, turns out these are the spacer for the adjusting the G gantry space in here yeah i forgot it but for your attention these are the spaces for the gantry positioning that was all for the wiring and now i need to commission the printer and did the config and other stuff yeah thanks for watching and see you in the next one